Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and today we are going to be working on another project using the Feature Craft More Please kit that released in July of 2020. So for this project specifically, I was inspired by two of the journaling cards that came in the kit. One says whoop, drank this, and one says ate this. Now this reminded me of a trip that my husband and I went on a couple years back to celebrate our anniversary. We knew that we were likely going to be having another child by the time our fifth year anniversary came around, so we decided to celebrate a year early instead and do like a big four-year celebration. And by big, I mean it wasn't like a huge celebration, but we did go on a mini vacation by ourselves out to the west side of Michigan in order to do a beer tour. So what I did prior to coming over here to the desk, and I will bring you guys over to my computer to show you exactly how I did this. Let me just get all my components out here that I want to work with today. And um, I set aside a couple of the uh, ephemera pieces to work with, and I have this blank. This was a uh, part of an insert that I removed out of a traveler's notebook. So I will make my own cover and turn this into a traveler's notebook for the project here. Uh, but what I did prior to coming over here today was I turned those, these two cards right here, these two three by four cards into full page um, traveler's notebook papers. So I'll show you guys how I did this. And just so you know, the only thing I added I added a little box at the bottom where I will be putting the photo from that particular place. So this is going to be a really easy traveler's notebook that's going to come together super fast. So I'm just going to do the whole thing in one video and um, I'll speed you guys up and we'll work through this together. Before we work on this, let's head over to the computer and I will show you those papers here and then we'll come back over here and put this thing together. Okay, so we are over here on my computer and I wanna show you guys how you can alter these cards in both Photoshop Creative Cloud and Photoshop Elements. So we're gonna do one in each of them. Let's start with Photoshop Creative Cloud and using the Drink This digital journaling card from that Future Craft kit. So I have the journaling card pulled open and this is three inches by four inches. So the first thing I wanna do is open up a new canvas that is sized at my uh, traveler's notebook size. So it's four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. We're going to go ahead and create that. And here is our page. From here, I want to go back to that original card and we are going to select all, which I'm going to use control A to select all and then control C to copy. We're going to go over to our canvas here and control V to paste. So here is our card. Next, what I want to do is erase these uh, sections around the outside of the card. So let's zoom in here a little bit. These are crop marks. So if you were just going to print out this card itself, um, that would allow you to see where to cut this card at. So but I want to get rid of them, actually. All right. So I'm going to get as close as I can to the red here and that black line from over here, and then I can just go ahead and erase the rest of it here. Go around, down, and the top as well. Okay, so there is that. So now that we have those erased, I want to transform this. So if I hit Control and T, that will give me this, uh, it'll outline it with the boxes, so I can make it bigger or smaller or move it or do whatever I want. I want to go ahead and expand it so it fills up this entire uh, width and then I'm going to hit enter and it will go ahead and uh, bring this into focus. Now let's zoom out and put this on the screen so we can fit it all on the screen here so we can see everything is placed. I'm going to hit that transform button again so control T in order to see where this line is and then I'm going to move that line up to the top of the page and hit enter. So now I know that that is at the top and I have this fairly large section here at the bottom. So my idea is to create a box that allows me to put a picture in it for the specific thing um, that we're talking about here. So what I want to do is go over to my shapes and I want the rectangle tool. Now I want my fill set to none. 
I want my stroke on black. Yep. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use four pixels is what I figured that this width is. And we're just going to go ahead and make our box. So I'm going to do my best to keep it the same width as the rest of this. So let's do that. I'm going to hit that move tool and just bump it over just a tiny little bit. That looks okay, I suppose. Let me see here. Let me, I might need to go in just a teensy bit. Yeah, that's better. Okay, but you can see that that four pixel width is, is, is pretty decent for this particular page. Now, when I made mine originally, I did put this whole card bit a little bit further down on my page, so this is not as big. Uh, I, I kind of wish that mine would have been this big, but you know, that's okay. So once I have this rectangle here created, I can go to my um, marquee tool and I'm just going to draw a box on the inside of the box that I created in order to get my measurements. So down at the bottom, you can see that my width is 3.1 inches and my height is 2.5. So if I were to create an image to go into this box, I probably would crop it at three inches by two and a half inches and call that good. Um, so that's that. The last thing I want to do here before I print this is go ahead and merge everything together so I can select all the layers, right click and merge layers. And now that is all one big thing. I would save it just like this. And then later, if I wanted to add my text before printing, I could just put my text boxes in to add whatever text I wanted to add. So that is this one in Photoshop Creative Cloud. If I were to do the other one in this program, I would do it the exact same way. So let's go over to elements. Here I have the eight this card up. So we're going to do the opposite card this time. Again, I want to open a new canvas and I want this to be 4.25 inches wide by 8.25 inches tall at 300 pixels per inch with a white background. So there is our page. Then we're going to go back to that original card here. We're going to select it all again, copy it, and then paste it over onto the large canvas over here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this so we can do the same thing with those lines. You know, I want to go out once. There we go. Then we're going to grab our eraser tool and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did on the last one. We're just going to erase all of the crop marks around the perimeter of this card. So let me grab there. Oops, that was a little too close. I want to try to get as close as I can without getting into the blue. It will be on the page and you most likely will trim it off anyway, but just in case it does uh, make things look a little cleaner when we get them printed. Okay. So that looks pretty good. So let's go to our move tool. When we hit the move tool, it's going to do the same thing as before and give us the ability to increase or decrease the size. Now here's the thing with elements is if you pull from the one, it disorients it. So we don't necessarily want to do that. We want to pull from the corners instead. So we're going to bring that all the way to the side and then we're going to do the same thing. Darn it. I thought I had the right thing. Okay. Let's try this again. So we want to bring this all the way to the side and all the way to the side. That's probably good. We're going to hit enter and then it will um, bring it into focus. Again, let's grab that magnifying glass and put this so it fits on the screen so we can see where everything is at. Then we're going to go ahead and move this up to the top of the page just like we did before just like that. Okay, so now that we have this top portion done, the next thing we need to do is build the uh, rectangle or the box that's going to go at the bottom for our picture. So here's how we're going to do it in Photoshop Elements. On the toolbar here at the left, we're going to grab the marquee tool, which is the rectangle with dotted lines. Then we're going to do the same thing that we did before, where we're going to draw a box. I want this to be See if I can get this lined up here. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna go. You know what? First, what we're gonna do, we're gonna hold up, we're gonna back up to go forward. So, first, what we're gonna do is create a new layer. So, we're gonna go 
over to our little like hamburger menu up in the right hand corner and we're going to say new layer layer two sure okay so this is just a blank layer then we're going to grab our marquee tool and we're going to draw a box on here and make it roughly the size of the ones above it i'm hoping that that seems right sure okay now we've got these marching ants going on so what we're going to do next is go up to edit and stroke outline selection. So here what I wanna do is pick that four pixel width, the color of black, and we're going to hit okay. Then we can deselect by control D, and that is going to give us our box, which is going to be on layer two, so then we can go ahead and move it if we want to. Yep, there's my move tool, so let's transform it. And we're going to, no, I want layer two. Oh my goodness, layer two, we're going to transform it and then we can move it where we want it to go. Probably right there. And I think that looks pretty good. So once we have the box the way that we want it to look, we can go to our right layers panel, select all of the layers, right click and merge layers. And that is going to give us our um, paper within Photoshop elements. Now, again, if you want to do both of them, I would just do the other one the exact same way. So let's go ahead and get all of these things printed out. I'm going to fill everything out before I print it using the text toolbox, and then we'll go over to the table and we will get this mini traveler's notebook album all assembled. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. So the first thing I'm going to do here is cut out all of those pictures that I printed. I ended up printing them at three inches wide by two inches tall, so two by three, which was perfect because I could fit four of them on a six by four photo then. So just made this part really easy. So I went ahead, trimmed those all out. I'm gonna count and just make sure that I've got enough pages because if I don't, I can totally add more pages if I need to. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and get started putting those pictures onto these papers. So I'm just going to adhere them down with some roller tape, put it into the square. I'm gonna skip over a bunch of this because it's all the same. Then once everything is adhered down, I'm gonna go page by page and add embellishments and stamps or you know something, at least one thing to each of these pages. So I have five of those little ephemera pieces that I kept aside. This first one I'm gonna put down on, um, this was a meal that we had in Kalamazoo at, I don't even know what it was. It was like a union, it was, it was not a union, it was like a brew pub type place and we had their gumbo and it was super interesting. So that one went there. The next one went on a picture of my husband having sushi. That one was a picture of me uh, with my favorite coffee drink from my favorite coffee place in Holland. Um, this one right here was a pizza flight that we had gotten at one of the breweries. And then now I have used up all of those <laughs> ephemera pieces. So for all of the ones that don't have an ephemera piece, what I'm going to do is add a stamp set or a stamp onto the photo. For some of them, I can just stamp directly onto the photo and for some for some of the other ones, I will stamp it onto a white matte sticker paper, cut that out and then adhere it onto the page. That's just because sometimes it's hard to see the stamps if they're too busy. Like this one right here, I probably could have put on white sticker paper and added it on there, but it's okay. It, you can see it a little bit better in person. So that one just says more please. Um, so next I'm gonna skip over the um, the photo that's got all of the, the flight on like a darker table. I'm gonna skip that one for now and go instead to the one that looks kind of like a menu or a TV screen and add a stamp onto there. So there is like a black section at the bottom of that photo, which is perfect for using white ink in order to make the sentiment stand out. So I have a stamp set that says, um, worth the hype. So this was a bar that my husband had told me about where 
It's called the stock market and you go there and you can order off their menu and depending on the popularity of things, they're more expensive and every once in a while there's like a stock market crash and things like go super cheap and it was it was a fun experience. It was a lot of fun. Next, I am going to add a sentiment to that first picture there. Uh, that was the first brewery that we visited called Arcadia, which actually, sadly, uh, closed over, I think it was like this past winter that it closed. Um, but it was really cool. It was like on the river and you could kayak to it and they had events and like an outdoor stage. So really sad. It still exists. The brewery does. It just that particular location closed down. So next we, um, what we did on this trip is we spent one night and day in each of three different towns or cities. So we went to Kalamazoo, Michigan, and then Holland, Michigan, and then Grand Rapids, Michigan. So in Holland, we visited one of our absolute favorite breweries, which is this one called uh, New Holland. And uh, we ordered dinner there. So this was a picture of my dinner. And then I also had a picture of our flight that I had already added something to. Um, yeah, Holland is definitely my favorite Michigan town by far. Um, so I love, like anytime we go out west, I always find an excuse to go out to Holland. Then uh, this one is from the Grand Rapids Brewing Company, another like kind of smaller scale type brewery, but really fun and cool because they had so many really different, different things. Like they had one beer that tasted kind of like tea and then they had one that was like a almost kind of like cucumber water but it was a cucumber beer and it was just it was really interesting and I super liked it so I always like the weird stuff and we had a lot of fun there so this is one that again I'm going to add to that white sticker paper fussy cut it out and add it onto that photo it just helps those sentiments to really pop off the page so that you can see them a lot better this next one is called The Mitten, and that is also in Grand Rapids. They, um, when we visited, they do beer flights and pizza flights, and we loved their pizza flights. Those were our favorite. The beer was like, mm, so-so, until we recently found one, uh, not from going there, we just <laughs> tried it at a local brewery that we love, and it's called uh, Peanut Butter and Cracker Jack, so it's a peanut butter porter, it is amazing, um, so, but at the time they didn't have that one, or at least we didn't try that one at the brewery itself, so I just remember that one having really, um, like, not, not exciting beers. <laughs> This was our last day in Grand Rapids, the last day on our trip. We went to this little uh, like cafe restaurant that opens for breakfast and lunch and brunch and had the best uh, chicken and waffles of our life. Um, so that is a picture of Erin eating the chicken and waffles breakfast. It was like, I'm trying to think what made it so different. I know that it was on something. I want to say it was on like a waffle or it was a waffle. No, you know what it was? It was a chicken and waffles eggs Benedict. That's what it was. You guys, it was the best thing I've ever had for breakfast food, maybe in my life. So we need to go back there and get that again for sure. And then the last brewery that you're going to see me work on is called Vivant Brewery. It's another one of our favorites and is out in Grand Rapids. The building itself that the brewery is located inside of was previously a chapel. So it's got like a really almost medieval feel to it. Um, and yeah, it's just really cool. They do a lot of sours, which are my favorite kind of beer. So we try to make our way over to that brewery whenever we're in Grand Rapids as well. And then that is going to be all of my stamping. So I just have this last little flag here to add on. Uh, and then once I have that done, the next thing I'm going to do is get the actual book assembled. So as you can see, all of my papers are loose. What I like to do when I'm working on my traveler's notebooks like this is to go ahead and work on loose pages and then add adhesive to the back of of each of those pages and stick them onto 
the paper that makes up the traveler's notebook. So essentially the paper of the notebook is sandwiched in between two pieces of four and a quarter by eight and a quarter pieces of, you know, whatever it is, pattern paper, card stock, uh, anything like that. So that is what I will do here. Oh, I forgot I had a picture at the end. <laughs> Duh. So this one, uh, there was a sentiment. It was perfect. It said food adventure. Um, so I am going to cut that out, fussy cut it, and then add that to the picture of us. This is a picture that we took together. I believe this is when we were still in Holland at the time. Um, just taking selfies and it's a really good one. So that is going to be the last page of our book here. Just, you know, since none of the other pictures are of the two of us, so it's kind of nice to end with one that is the two of us since, you know, this was for our anniversary. Okay, so here we go. So now I use the scrapbook.com uh, double-sided adhesive or score tape. I love, love, love their score tape. It's very reasonably priced, and I usually just get a ton of it and have it on on you know, in my stack or in my stash, uh, especially because I run out of roller adhesive all the time. So it's nice to have some backup adhesive that I can use when I run out because I inevitably will. Then I also am taking my pen there and just filling out all of those little, all of those little fields. So there's one that's like it tasted and you could put, you know, like bubbly or sweet or so good, yummy. There's like a bunch of different words that you could check off. And then uh, there's the level of satisfaction one through 10. So we could also, I could also fill out how much we liked the beer that we had there. I know that the eight this card or paper has different sentiments on it. We'll see when we get there if I can remember what they are. It's kind of the same uh, where there's like the one through 10 and then there's like a section that you can check off different descriptors, but it's not quite the same. There it is. So we've got it tasted and then frequency of consumption. So it's a little bit different. So we could say like this was the first time we had it or this is something we get all the time or, you know, whatever it is like that. So I left a couple of these in so you could see how that works. So that one is now sandwiched on there. And then we're going to skip over a bunch of them and go straight to the end so you guys don't have to see me tape down every single page in this book. But basically, I work on the left side of all the papers first and then the or of the book first and then the right side um, and just build it as we go. So now I've got my packet here ready to go. I'm going to get rid of all of that uh, backing paper and then we're going to add a stamp here to the front of this book one of my favorite things to do for travel albums is to get the state stamp uh, these are from studio calico i like to get the state stamp so i can stamp that onto the front of the album or the country but you know we haven't really done so any out of country travel in a very long time so uh pretty much states and then uh, i'll stamp it there on the cover and then add a heart to the areas that we went to which basically i'm just gonna stamp the little heart on the west side of the state uh, that is where grand rapids and holland and kalamazoo are all located is over by lake michigan and then i will grab my date roller date stamp and add the dates that we went uh, on this vacation into the book as well. So I'm just going to stick that right underneath the state stamp there. Pretty easy, pretty simple. I like to keep this front page really simple uh, in almost all of my albums. Next, I need to make myself a cover since this was just paper. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece of pattern paper at eight and a quarter inches tall. So it will be the exact same height as all of my papers, but then I'm going to cut it at nine inches wide. I will grab over my scoreboard and score that at four and a half inches. So it's going to be a quarter of an inch longer on each of the sides than my papers, which is good because a lot of times when you get your books, um, like, bound together, whether it's with staples or stitching or whatever way you choose, a lot of times the pages end up being a little bit uneven. So I like to make my covers bigger so that it covers the entire book, even with all the bulk. So I decided to go ahead and stitch mine closed. Usually I use a template to do this. This one, I decided I didn't really 
I didn't really care. I didn't really want to bother with that. Plus, this one's just for me. It's not a gift or anything, so it doesn't matter if the stitching or the length of, e of each stitch is not even. It doesn't really bother me. So I will go ahead and go, um, what is that called? A straight stitch just all the way up to the top. So I start in the middle from the inside, go up to the top, all the way down to the bottom and back to the middle. Then I can take the two middle strands and tie them in a double knot in the middle of this book, cut off the excess, just leaving a, like a tiny bit of tail on there just so it doesn't unravel. And then that will be the book here. So uh, we will go ahead and slow you guys back down. All right, you guys, that finishes this little booklet. That was super fun. Um, and, and like I said, it came together really quick once I had those papers already figured out through Photoshop and printed off. So I just picked a random, I mean, it's not random, but I, I picked a pattern paper that I liked that had a lot of color in it. Um, I could potentially have covered the inside, but it didn't really bother me. It's all about like exploring and going places and staying curious. You are my lucky star. So it's, you know, it worked. It still works for the type of, of book that this is. Stamped the Michigan in there. And then we just can leaf through and see all of the different things that we ate and that we drank on this anniversary celebration trip. So really fun. Uh, what I think I will do with this, that's just a picture of us from the trip. What I think I will do with this is um, when I go to do my 2017 Project Life album, so I am actually working on catching up with my Project Life. I started Project Life in 2019. I have already gone back and done 2015. I am almost done with 2016, and then I will start on 2017. Since this trip happened in 2017, what I'm going to do eventually, not right now because I don't need to right now, um, but I will take a um, an envelope, one of maybe my Allie Edwards envelopes that's a bit longer, put this inside of it and hole punch it, and then this will go inside my Project Life album for the week that we went on this trip. So it will, there'll be some documentation of that in my Project Life through my journaling cards, talking about what we did and why we did it uh, in the different places that we went. But then you'll be able to pull this book out and actually see the progression of our trip as we were on it. Um, yeah, so that should be a really fun little addition for that album. I hope that this gives you guys an idea of another fun way to use this More Please kit. This was really fun and I had such a blast making all of the different projects for this, al for this album, but for this kit in general as well. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see all of my future crafty videos. Um, I do have some more videos coming your way, so keep your eye out for those. And until then, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I will catch you all in the next video. Bye now.